Welcome back to Halo Innovations. The video today will be covering how to toolpath and cut a part that needs to be indexed. Indexing is used when cutting a part that's larger than the cutting area of the table. This video will be making the replacement water tray slats for the 2x2 plasma table. If you want the finished files for these water tray slats, you can find them on and more on our website, which is linked in the description. When bringing an SVG or DXF file into Fusion, we found that it usually needs to be resized. So go ahead and make a construction box that matches the size of the part that you need to cut. Go ahead and bring the file in. Resize the sketch of the part to match the box that we made. Next, extrude the sketch. We want to extrude it because we're going to be showing you how to index a body specifically in this video. Next, we need to orient the part lengthwise on the y-axis. The reason for this is to be able to set accurate stock points and not have to rotate the part at the table later on. We need to divide this part into two sections. So start a sketch and select the top of the part as the sketch plane. The 2x2 plasma table has a cutting area of 500 millimeters, so we want to draw the, the dividing line somewhere on the part less than 500 millimeters away from one of the ends. Make sure the ends of this line extend past the edges of the part. We want it to be short so it doesn't mess with this THC too much, since it will be cutting the same line twice on each side of the part. So 5 millimeters should be good. On a side note, you can make the short side of the part the first side if you don't want to have to slide the material as far between the cuts. We'll make a horizontal line at the edge of the part so that we have a node available that will match the location of our index line in order to create a similar stock point for both sections of the part, allowing for the same start location for both sections. With that done, we'll move into the manufacturing workspace. Create a new setup and select Origin Point. Then choose Selected Point. You'll also want to make sure that you select the body as the model. Do the same steps for the second setup, but this time we're going to select the horizontal line that we made for the stock point. Select the first setup and start creating a toolpath by clicking cutting. Cutting. 
Make sure to set the tool that you're using and select just the hole for the first toolpath. Make sure the red arrow is pointing counterclockwise. You'll also want to enable smoothing in the Passes tab. And then set the values for the lead in and lead out. Create another toolpath, this time for the first section of the water tray slat. We'll follow the same steps, but this time select the vertical index line as the first contour and the outside edge of the slat as the second contour. Ensure the red arrow on both is pointing in a clockwise direction. For the vertical index line, this will be pointing up since we want to cut the first section of the slat. After that, activate the second setup and follow the same steps as before. But when selecting the contours, you will want the arrow on the vertical index line to be pointing down this time, so that it will select the second section of the slat. If you created the toolpath for the circle and the outside edges in the wrong order like we did here, you can drag the bottom profile above the other one. Remember that the profiles will be cut in the order they're placed in the setup. Once both toolpaths are finished, we can post-process them. After doing this, put them on a USB key and bring them to your table. Before we cut the file we made, the first thing we need to do is figure out the kerf width. The thickness for one of these water tray slats should be no more than 0.108 inches. On the controller, go into the shape library and select the square. We're going to make it 50 millimeters by 50 millimeters. With our test square cut out, we can take a measuring tape or some calipers and measure the width. Be sure to remove the dross from your test piece before measuring. With the current width that we have set on the table, we got a 50 millimeters right on the dot. After adjusting the curve if you need to, we're ready to get things set up to cut the first section of the water tray slat. Next we need to make sure the material is square on the table. Since we're using our 2x2, we can push the material right up against the gantry rail mounting plate 
to help us do this. You will also need to reference where the material is starting on the table so that we can use that information later on to move the material for the second section of the slat. Since cutting on our 4x4 table, then you'll need to use the gantry rail to help you get the material square. Measure 6 inches off the gantry rail on both ends of the table, or create some kind of wedge or tool that you can attach to the gantry rail in order to aid in making sure the material is square. Once the material is square and your reference point is decided, we can start cutting the slat. Next, we need to slide the material toward us by the length of the first section of the slat that we just cut, making sure to have something set up to support the material that will be hanging off the edge of the table. We now need to get the torch into the position where it would be cutting the lead in. To do this, we can use some movement functions on the table that are often used for cut recovery. If you press the G key and then the green start key, or the shift key, you'll enter the cutting menu. In the cutting menu, you can press the demo button to run the program without firing the arc. Pressing the back key will run the program in reverse, and pressing the go back key will allow you to return the torch to the chosen zero point. Using a combination of the demo and back buttons, position the torch above the lead-in of the outer edge of the slat. We found that just measuring and sliding the material is sometimes not as accurate as we would like, so we've started using a small pin that will fit through the tip of the nozzle that we're using in order to help us be pinpoint accurate with where the torch will pierce and cut the material. Just be sure not to forget to remove the cap with the pin in it before firing the arc again. Now that we have everything set up, we can begin cutting the second section of the slat.
and that's the replacement slat indexed and cut on the 2x2 table. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.